welcome back to video number six where we are talking about the DSL still part two, the domain specific language introduced by Spark SQL, in other words, the data set API. And here we want to look at functions which we can use um, on columns. So we will have a look at the column class and we will also see which functions are implemented by the columns to be called on a column. And we will also see where we can find this information in the reference. Let's get started. All right, let's head over to our IDE. So what we have seen in the last video is that we can access a column reference from a data frame, for example, df with the apply method with the name of the column, for example, open, which is a double of the open value of the day for this particular stock. And we can store this reference in a variable called column, for example. So if we resolve this apply method of the data frame, we can see that it returns a column here. And if I re resolve the column in, uh, in turn, we end up at the definition of a column, which is one column in our data frame. Now on the column, if we have an, an object of this class, we can call all of the methods which, which are defined in this class. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see what function, which methods are defi defined on a column. For example, here is defined an plus. Here is defined a plus method. So we can call this plus method on our column. I will show you how. So what we can do now is say column, which is a reference to a column. And then we can call on this one plus, for example, and then we can pass in any other. So for example, we can pass an, in any double value. So that will work and would return a new column. Or in Scala, we can also say something like this, which, which is a shorthand for calling the plus, the plus method on our column reference. So this returns a new column, new column, which has all of the values increased um, by the double of two. Going back to the column class, we can also see that there is a cast method, which casts a column into another data type. So here is the signature of the cast function or method. If we call cast, we have to specify the new data type. So what we could do, for example, is to say column, which references the open column in our data frame, and then say dot cast. And here we have to provide a data type, for example, a string type. And that one we have to import and we use this org apache spark sql dot types which we have seen previously that's where all the spark types are defined so this statement would transform our column into a new column by casting all of the values to a string and we could store this one for example in a new reference or a web value and call it column column string so the important thing to notice is that there is nothing actually happening on the data as long as we are only specifying these transformations. Because what this is, is basically we get a reference to a column. So Spark knows where to find the data. So from the data frame DF, it takes the open column and then we specify two new de newly derived columns based on this input column. So for example, the new column has all of the values from the initial column increased by two and the column string um, is basically the open column casted to a string type. Now what we can do is for example say df.select and then we say column new column oh, new, new column and column string and then print this and it will print our three columns. All right, as we can see, we have printed a new data frame, which consists only of the three columns that we have specified. 
on the left hand is the initial column and then there are two transformations based on what we have specified in our code. So the second column is basically the opening value increased by two and the third column is a string of the initial double. Now what we can do else using the column functions is for example to compare columns. So here for example we also have a gt method um, which I need to find. So here is the shorthand for greater and the gt also stands for greater where we can compare a column against a value or a different column. So for example what we could say is df. So on this data frame that we have created here we can say filter for example and then say where our new column which is a reference to our column is greater than 2.0 and it will only yield the rows in our data frame which have a value of the new column greater than 2.0 which should be basically all of them because we have previously increased them by 2 um, or we could even compare two columns. For example, we could say where new column is larger than column, which needs to be true for all of the rows as well, because the new column is simply the column increased by two. So now if we print this, we can see that this basically also works. So yeah, we have a new printed data frame which is basically not filtered based on our conditions but we know now how we can compare two columns and how we can compare a column against a specific value and all of these functions you can find specified or defined implemented in the column class so that's always a good way to look this up of course you know you can also find this information in the browser so if you go to spark uh, apache.org and then to the API reference for Scala and then to the package Spark and then SQL and then to the column. Here you can see all of the defined methods of a column object. One important one is also the equality test which actually if you are comparing two columns for equali equality um, you need to use three equal signs and that's because the two equal signs are used by Scala itself and therefore if we compare two columns we use three equal signs. If we do this in the code we could say dot filter and if we say new column and using two equal signs won't work because here it tries to compare two objects but rather we need three equal signs such that it knows that we are comparing two columns. So we want to compare for equality, equality, new column and column, which will be false for all of the rows. And if we print this now, it will give us an empty data frame. So wrapping this video up, using the column class, we can find all of the functions defined on a column. And the column functions allow us to compare two columns, to transform columns into new columns, and also to use these column references in the select and filter methods provided by the dataset API, so that we can create new data frames out of transforming columns from a previous data frame, for example. And that's what we have seen in this video. If you want to see which functions are defined on columns, you can always go to the Spark reference or you can also inspect the column class in your IDE. Now what I forgot to mention is if we transform columns like in this row for example um, we can see in the output that the resulting column name of the transformed column basically is a string representation of the transformation that we that led to that very column. So if we want to assign this one a more useful or readable name, we can use a method on the column, which is defined on the column in turn. So we embrace this um, transformation and then we say as, and then we can give it an alias, for example, 
in what is it open increased by two so this column will have a new column name um, respective to the argument we pass to this as function and here we for example we can say as and then a string um, open as string for example and if we run this again now without our filters we don't need them here at this point let's run this one we will see that we have more useful column names all right here's our result and we can see that our header or our column names are open open increased by two and open as string